A single can sealed in 1943 was opened 80 years later. Still thick, still sweet. This isn't just milk, it's engineered survival. Boiled, sugared, and built to outlive the cow it came from. What's the secret that makes it almost immortal? At the heart of condensed milk is something deceptively simple. Full-fat cow's milk, collected within just hours of milking. This isn't the kind of milk that waits. It's chilled immediately to under 4 degrees Celsius and pumped into stainless steel refrigerated tankers, built to keep it cold during transport. The goal? Stop bacterial growth before it even starts. Every tanker is traceable back to its farm source, and many factories receive over 100,000 liters per day. Once it arrives, the milk is offloaded into giant insulated silos, still chilled, still untouched. And this milk isn't skimmed. It's the full 3.5% fat, giving condensed milk its rich, creamy body. No additives, no concentrates, just raw, whole milk, delivered fast, stored cold, and prepped for a transformation few ingredients ever go through. And before milk becomes immortal, it has to survive the heat first. But not every drop survives. The milk's first real trial is heat, enough to kill, but not enough to ruin. In massive plate heat exchangers, the liquid is flash heated to around 85 degrees Celsius for just 15 seconds. That's all it takes to eliminate harmful microbes like E. coli or Listeria without boiling away the taste or texture. This step is precise, rapid, and absolutely critical. Pasteurization doesn't just make the milk safe, it also sets the foundation for shelf stability. In the Civil War, soldiers relied on this pasteurized milk, canned and sweetened, to survive without fresh supplies. The process hasn't changed much since then, only the machines have gotten faster. And with bacteria neutralized, the milk is finally ready for its biggest transformation yet. Next up is what happens when you remove 60% of water without boiling. Because to make it last, they don't add chemicals, they simply take water away. So now the milk faces its most dramatic change. In massive vacuum evaporators, it's gently heated but under reduced pressure, which means it boils at just 60 degrees Celsius instead of 100. This protects the milk from burning or curdling. Over time, around 60% of its water content is removed. What's left behind is a thick, rich concentrate, the base of condensed milk. It's more than just a texture shift. Less water means fewer chances for bacteria to survive. And unlike boiling, this process preserves both nutrients and flavor, making it efficient and clean. The entire step mimics high-altitude cooking, lower pressure, lower temperature, same transformation. By the end, milk is no longer just milk. It's something denser, more resilient, and ready to take on sweetness. This isn't just sugar for taste, it's preservation disguised as dessert. Still, without one crucial ingredient, this thick milk would still rot fast. At this point, the milk is thick but still fragile. This is where sugar steps in. About 40 to 45% by weight is added, and the result isn't just sweet, it's strategic. Sugar binds to the remaining water molecules, reducing what scientists call water activity, a key factor in microbial growth. With so little free water left, bacteria simply can't survive. It's the same preservation principle behind jams and syrups, but condensed milk pushes it even further. The final product becomes self-preserving, needing no refrigeration and no added chemicals. It's this blend, heat-treated milk, low moisture, and high sugar that gives condensed milk its legendary shelf life. The flavor is rich, yes, but it's the chemistry of survival that makes it remarkable. Now to become the condensed milk you recognize, it needs to cement the structure. At this stage, the thick and sweet is unstable. Without homogenization, it would separate into fat and liquid over time. So, it's sent through high-pressure homogenizers, where the fat molecules are broken down and evenly dispersed throughout the milk. The result? A uniform, silky texture that stays glossy and cohesive from the factory floor to your spoon. This step doesn't change the flavor, but it locks in the consistency. 
that glossy finish. It's so distinct, cultures from Vietnam to Argentina built entire desserts around it. Homogenization isn't about taste, it's about experience. Every drizzle, every spoonful, feels identical. And now condensed milk isn't just preserved, it's perfected. But smoothness alone won't save it. Time to freeze the chaos. Even the right texture can fail if the cooling isn't controlled with precision. With sweetness and smoothness in place, the next threat is hidden, crystallization. If the milk cools too fast or too slow, sugar crystals can form unevenly, leading to a gritty, unpleasant texture. So factories bring the temperature down precisely to about 30 degrees Celsius, using chilled stainless steel cooling jackets or spiral chillers. Sometimes they add microscopic lactose crystals to guide the process, like planting seeds to control the outcome. This ensures a uniform, creamy texture from edge to edge. The milk may be thick and glossy, but without this delicate balance of time and temperature, the final product could break apart in storage or lose its luxurious feel. In condensed milk, even the cool down is chemistry. Now it's stable, but how do you lock it away for two years? It's smooth, sweet, and stable. But how do you lock it away for two years? Here's how it gets the armor to survive time. Once cooled, the condensed milk is ready to be sealed into its final form. It's either hot filled directly or sent through aseptic fillers, which place it into pre-sterilized cans in a sterile environment. These cans are then sealed with vacuum closures, pulling out any remaining oxygen. This prevents oxidation, spoilage, and microbial intrusion, even after years on a shelf. Inside, the cans are coated with food-grade polymer lining, which keeps the metal from reacting with the sugary milk. It's a perfect seal for safety, longevity, and flavor. But be very careful. If you boil the sealed can at home, you're making dessert and a pressure bomb. In the factory, pressure is controlled. At home, it's a gamble. It's sealed, but why doesn't it rot? Science says everything. Now it's sealed in tight, but the real protection comes from what's inside. Condensed milk does more than just survive, it resists time itself. We know the final product has an ultra-low water activity level, around 0.86, meaning there's barely any unbound water left for bacteria to use. Combine that with high sugar content and a naturally low pH, and you get a hostile environment for microbial life. No molds, no spoilage, no refrigeration required. The result? A product that can last up to two years unopened, even in tropical climates. It's not magic, it's chemistry, perfected. That's exactly why in many regions without refrigeration, this can isn't dessert. It's a survival tool, because condensed milk's real strength isn't in its sweetness, but in its ability to endure. And before it ever leaves the factory, every can faces one final test. Once sealed and shelf-stable, every can gets its identity. Batch codes, expiration dates, and nutritional labels are printed and checked by automated systems. From there, cans are boxed and palletized, then stored in massive dry warehouses kept between 15 and 25 degrees Celsius to prevent temperature swings. More than storage facilities, these warehouses serve as launch pads. From a single plant, millions of cans are shipped each month to bakeries, supermarkets, military bases, and rural villages. Some go straight into cafe drinks. Others travel halfway around the world before being opened. This is the final step, global distribution of a product designed not just to taste good, but to survive it all. Every label, every barcode is a passport for resilience in a can. Interestingly, machines this precise still depend on human backup. So right before export, random samples are pulled and tested for sugar content, texture, and water activity. Automated systems scan for dents, weight errors, or sealing faults. Anything off? It's rejected instantly. Only cans that pass every test are cleared for shipping, because survival means nothing without consistency. Every can is earned. Which part surprised you more? The vacuum science or the sugar chemistry?